Hello hackers! Welcome to the new video where we are going to hack insecure direct object reference from Web Security Academy and powered by Portswiga. So this lab stores a user chat logs directly on the server's file system and retrieves them using static URLs. And to solve the lab, all what we have to do is to find the password of the user Kalos. So guys, before moving forward, let's talk a little bit about this insecure direct object reference. So let's go to the WASP sheet sheet series. And WASP is one of the famous cybersecurity organization in the world. The abbreviation of the word insecurity direct object reference, which is the IDOR. And it's one of the famous bug in the world. So let's check the WASP top list from 2017 to 2021. And as you can see in here, in 2017, the access control, it was the fifth on the list. But from 2021 until now, 2024, broken access control take the first position, which means one of the biggest bugs on the internet are related to the access control and specifically to the IDOR. So let's talk a little bit about IDOR. So in basic definition, IDOR is whenever the attacker is able to access or make any modification on the object by manipulating the identifiers, which means the IDs from the parameters or from the body request. So let's take this example, and as you can see, we have this website example.org, then we have users, and we have the ID. So basically, this is the user ID, and as you can see, it's understandable, which is 123. So how we can manipulate this request to maybe have access to another user's data? I can change this ID to 124 or maybe 122, or to be more fast, I can make a brute force attack from one to maybe a thousand and check all these requests and maybe I get return of 200 and then I gain access to user's data. So this is basically what is IDOR vulnerability and this is what we are going to do in this lab. So guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video and let's start. And here we go everybody. So in case that I know from the description of this lab that the bug exists in the live chat over here, I'm going directly in here. So let me go to the live chat. Here we go. Now we have the system. He said no chat history on the record and we have connected now chatting with a helpline. So this is basically maybe a customer service or a chatbot or whatever. So I'm going to activate now Foxy Proxy. I'm using Community Edition. Let's go to the proxy. Let's click Enter Spec twice and let's go to HTTP history in here. Let me refresh the page. And here we go. Now I have the chat over here and let me chat with a helpline. Let me say hello. I need your help to delete my account. And let me send the request over here. And here we go. Now he said, I thought you were out for the day. I was happy. So whatever, he says something not related. So let's check this button, which is a view transcript. Let me click in here. And as you can see, he downloaded a file. Let me just open it. So I'm using VS Code as a default editor. Now you can see I have connected, now chat with the helpline, and then we have hello, I need your help to delete my account. And then we have this HTML break line, and then helpline, I thought, whatever. And then he sent his message. So this is absolutely what I have in here. So as you can recognize, we have 2.txt in here. And as we mentioned for the previous example, it's absolutely look similar to this one. So let me check the endpoint. Now we have get request, download, then transcript, and then we have 2.txt. So this is absolutely similar of this example. So let me send this to repeater. So basically I can make brute force attack or I can just change it manually. So let me change it manually and let me say zero and let me see what's going to have. So in here, no script. So let me say number three, no script. Let me say number 10, no script. So let me try number one. 
and C. So I choose number one because my file over here, which is 2.txt, so maybe we find 1.txt. And here we go. Now I absolutely found another test, which is a static URL from here. So let's read the conversation. So now chatting with the helpline. Hi, hell, I think I have forgotten my password and I need a confirmation that I have got to the right one. He said, sure, no problem, you seem like a nice guy. Just tell me your password and I will confirm whether it's correct or not. He said, wow, you're so nice guy, thanks. I have heard from other people that you can be the right or whatever. And now he say that his password is this random character. So let me just copy it in here. Let me go to my account. Let me say Carlos and let me try to connect using his password. And let me check. And here we go, guys. Now we successfully solve the lab. So basically, this is an IDOR attack, which means I can manipulate the endpoint, base it on the identifier to get access to another data that I'm not allowed to gain access for it. If I'm able to make read only as what I did in this case, so I did an IDOR. And in the other case, if I'm able to make a modification, which may be with a post method, let's check it over here and see. Also, it's an IDOR vulnerability. So let's check the post and see if I'm able to make any modification. And in this case that we have 500, which means that there is no post method exists. So guys, I hope that you learned something new about the IDOR vulnerability. So if you liked my video, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel. And if you have any question or any feedback, please put it in the comment below and stay tuned to the next videos.